I've been asked to introduce Greg Tochenik. Tosh. 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 Okay, sorry. He's currently a general manager at Matrix Logistics Services and is responsible for the site at their distribution center located in Calgary. Greg started his logistics career in 1987 when he joined the Persani Group, which is the largest sporting goods provider in Canada. In 2006, Greg relocated to a larger distribution network as warehouse manager for Parts Canada, servicing aftermarket motorcycle ATV parts and apparel to dealership across Western Canada. From 2007 to 2012, he was responsible for the distribution network of pharmaceutical and front shop products to Walmart, PharmaSafe, and People's Drug Mart, uh, stores across Western Canada. Greg joined Matrix Logistics Services in April of 2012 and is a graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology from the University of Calgary. Welcome, Greg. Hey, thanks for that. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. You guys are still going strong? Perfect. Well, welcome. I'm Greg Toshnik. I, uh, I want to take in my time machine. Who's ready to go my time machine? Yeah. All right. 1987, as it was mentioned, 29 years ago. Uh, June, coming out of high school. Yay! Two months off. I'm going to work on my tan, play on the beach, because it was back then, everything was about the tan. We didn't have a hundred uh, sunblock or anything like that, so I thought, okay, two months, got through 12 years of school, that's great. Tuesday, I wake up after having the Monday off. Tuesday, my dad goes, and I found it kind of strange because he was off work, but he goes, let's go in the car. I thought, okay, well, he's taking Tuesday off, maybe we're going golfing or something like that, something fun. Puts me in the car, and away we go. So we're driving, and we go past the golf course he's taken me a couple times, and then I finally say, well, where are we going? And he goes, well, you're going to an interview. <laughs> so, okay. Well, what about summer? What about my tan? What about this? Oh, no, you're, you're going for an interview. And I'm in shorts, and I'm in a t-shirt, and I think I had sandals on. And we get to this place called Fort Daniels. And I sit there, and he goes, okay, I'll wait in the car. Or I don't even think he waited in the car. He came in, and he said, no, I have an appointment. This is my son. And then he says, he's looking for a job. Okay. So the guy goes, so you're done school, what, what hours can you work? I know you're from the south, uh, you have reliable transport. I said, yeah. He said, good, you're hired. You start tomorrow. There goes my summer. <laughs> so that's interesting. So what do we do? First day of work, I get there, and part of the responsibilities is uh, sitting in a semicircle in a chair with a garbage can there, and you have to wheel some shoes over, and you know the inserts in the shoes? Everybody hates that. You go to Walmart, they're all over the place. So we had to take the shoes, the inserts out, put these shoes together, make sure they're the same size, and twist tie them together. And then put them in a pot. Size sevens over there, ladies. Eights, nines, tens, and put the garbage in the garbage. That was my summer for two months. <laughs> this, this, I can do it really fast. We made games, there were seven of us in the semicircle. We, we actually made it fun. Um, we, who would uh, go through the pile the fastest? Who could go and do the cardboard recycle? And then once that was all done, they kept us on to do a Max Bell sale. So it was a discounted sale. I don't know if anybody knew went to any of these, but they had all these cubby holes and all these shoes were there. And as soon as everybody came in, there were great prices and all the shoes were on the ground. So I spent the rest of my summer picking up shoes and playing back of it. And there. And there. So there's my story. Um, if you want to get hired, take your dad. Your dad gives you a job. <laughs> And made sure it was a co-op program, so they got me at half price. The government paid for half, and I got uh, the other half. So they didn't have to even pay full price for me. So if you really want a job out there in the industry, get your dad to take you and make sure you're at half price. Okay? But seriously, that's how I started 29 years ago, doing that. And some people left with after two, two I'm not doing this, but I'm out of here. But there was seven of us, the lucky seven that stayed, and that kind of... Uh, started my career in logistics. So where we are now, I'm uh, with a company called Matrix Log uh, Logistics Services. We service shoppers, drug mart stores across Canada in five distribution centers, and we've been doing that for 20 years as a third-party logistics. Uh, points of interest, uh, I'm gonna take you through a little bit of our structure, uh, how we recruit, some of the training opportunities and advancement that we do. 
Okay? So Matrix Logistics, we are a member company and we're actually part of a larger organization called XL Logistics. And that branch is all of North America. So Mexico, the US and Canada. And Matrix is part of this one organization which is then owned by DHL Supply Chain globally. So there's actually three levels to where we are. So there's a lot of structure, uh, a lot of different rules, regulations, uh, and support that we deal with. So for Matrix, we're a third party logistics. We have one client for shoppers drug parts, uh, stores. Uh, there's other member companies that uh, as part of our organization, Harmony Logistics, they have uh, Whirlpool as a client. They also have Loblaw stores. We have uh, Cabela's that we just opened up in Calgary as well. So we're very diversified in the industry. Uh, Matrix is, uh, as I said, a member company of XL, which is North America, which is DHL supply chain. And DHL supply chain is the largest supply chain solution provider in the world with over 200,000 employees in 60 countries. So it's kind of impressive when you throw that up there. We move a lot of stuff. Uh, DSC focuses on six key sectors. So we are in the automotive industry. Uh, some of our clients are Ford, Fiat, Volkswagen, maybe you guys recognize some of these names. Uh, food and beverage, Mondelez, Procter & Gamble, Smuckers, uh, we're into energy, uh, Shell, British Petroleum, Dow, we supply them with parts for their facilities. Uh, also in the life sciences and healthcare, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. Also technology, Dell and HP. And in the retail sector where we are, Shoppers Drug Mart, Loblaws, Whirlpool, Cabela's, just locally here in Calgary. Uh, we provide the warehousing, distribution, sometimes transportation, uh, packaging, uh, kitting. Uh, kitting solutions is basically when you take some of these deals that uh, suppliers, uh, bonus packs and that kind of stuff, we'll put them together in the packaging and then send them out. And we do all that kind of stuff for all of our clients. And we have 258 million square feet of warehouse terminal and site space in the world, which uh, works out to about 3,360 soccer pitches. Uh, you can tell DHL came up with that one based out of Germany. There you go. I tried to convert that into hockey arenas, but I wasn't successful. So just kind of left it there for everybody. So we're very global, very diversified uh, industry. So how do we recruit? Well, for, we have a couple streams. We have hourly team members. And for Matrix and our Calgary site, we use an online application process. It's not an ATS. And what we ask you to do is go on to our website, uh, www.warehousework.ca. And it's matrix specific, so we'll list our sites across the country. So it's a drop down menu, and you'll pick Calgary, Moncton, uh, Ontario, and then it'll list the job postings available, and then you can submit your resume online there. And what happens then is we take them for our HR department, and they do a quick screening, and they look at the candidates and take a look at their resumes. Our entry level is at our board selector level in our case pick area. So for that, it's a very manual process, but like I said, you gotta start somewhere. I had to put shoes together for a summer and ruin my tan. Um, for our aspect, we ask you to drive a double pallet jack and pick cases and select orders for the shopper stores. Uh, once you apply, our process is basically, we look at your resume, we look for a couple of things. We look for stability, we look for possibly some experience, not necessarily technical experience, we can train all that kind of stuff. We can you know, put you on a power project and train you how to use that, or a dog stalker. But what we're looking for is somebody who's reliable, somebody who's flexible, somebody that can maybe pick one of our shifts. Uh, we're close to, uh, sorry about that. Is that right? Hello? Hello? Okay, sorry about that. Um, everybody can hear me still? Okay, good. So uh, what we're looking for is stability, uh, flexibility. We have, uh, we're close to a seven day operation for 24 hours, so we're looking for uh, particular shifts, whether that's on the night shift or the afternoon shift. We're looking for part-time, full-time positions, uh, and looking for somebody that wants to be there. Uh, once, once we do that, 
and we screen, we bring in the candidates, we go through the interview process, we do a quick test if we think that uh, you know we see something. Um, we do some mathematical, logical ability testing, which is basically can you count, do you know how to add, um, do you know ABC, D follows. So um, the testing there is, is not super hard, but we want to make sure that those core competencies are there. In the interview process, what we look for is passion. Do you want to be there? Do you want to do shoes? Can you do shoes for eight hours a day and, and make it fun and be there? Uh, we want to see that. We want to see people that want to be there fit into our culture. We ask about health and safety. It's very, very important. We want people to go home uh, in the same condition or better than when they arrive for work every day. And our team members demand that of their colleagues. If they see somebody that's not acting safe, they're going to come to us and say, you know what, I don't want to work beside Chris because Chris is going to kill me and I'm not going to be at uh, my five-year-old's birthday party. So the safety culture is huge. We, we ask questions on uh, what do you see? What do you see if something like that happens? Because uh, that's very important. We also look at passion, as we said. What do you want to do? Why are you there? Do you want to just have a part-time job? Um, do you want to supplement your income because your significant other has another full-time job and you need some more money? Do you want to uh, grow with our company? Do you want to be the next general manager? Do you want to go from putting shoes together to looking at the uh, facility of uh, 440,000 square feet? So we try and get these information out of, the, out of the interview process and then if that happens, then you're offered the position and we just don't throw you out there and say, okay, get to work. Um, I know how that feels. That was uh, way back in the day. Uh, we actually go through a three-day orientation course uh, on the company policies, our expectations, our culture, our health and safety procedures, and then we put you on our material handling equipment and do some testing and making sure that you can drive the equipment efficiently. So that's three days before you even hit the work floor. Then once you start up, you're on a 90-day onboarding program where you're assessed on your competency and progress. So we're on labor standards. We have a set amount of cases to pick an hour, pieces to pick an hour, in order to match the volume that our client requires. And you'll see that a lot in any third-party logistics. Uh, companies want to pay us to do their job and be efficient, be safe, and to be accurate. Nothing's worse than when grandma goes to Shoppers Drug Mart Pharmacy and they got some special medication and we sent the wrong thing or it didn't arrive in time. Very important. So one of the things we stress to all of our staff is they're an essential part of everyday life, whether it's uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, anything you see from you know the food and, and paper products, toilet paper could be the most important thing to a person at a specific point in time, more than cholesterol medication. So. You know, we do everything in the shopper store, so it's very important that, you know, it's not boxes in and out, it's passion, it's customer service, it's making sure that everybody gets what they need. So we really stress that. Part of that is the 90-day onboarding program, and we actually have levels that everybody uh, hits, and we have a mentoring program, coaching, um, uh, shadowing techniques so that individuals can get to the, to the levels that we require. For our leadership uh, team leads, uh, we call our supervisors team leaders. Uh, we have positions are posted online at xl.com, which now takes you to the DHL supply chain site. So if you punch in xl.com, it'll take you to DHL. From there, you can see uh, any team member or team leader open positions. And these are for sites locally, regionally, or worldwide and they'll give you the job postings and where these locations are. So if you're looking for, um, well, like I said, our hourly warehouse work, that's on there. If you're looking for engineering jobs, if you're looking for purchasing jobs, uh, HR jobs, everything is there site-specific based on region. So very diversified in that aspect. So we go to the training side, 90-day onboarding, um, provided feedback weekly on performance in order to achieve 100% productivity in their area. It's a graduated process that increases week after week for eight weeks until the new hire is performing to standard. Uh, the other four weeks is the determination factor where are they there yet, are they close, can they get there, or do we have to maybe part ways. 
but we give everybody an opportunity to try and do the best they can. Cross training programs, uh, we have this in place for our team members in order to help them advance. So you start off in case pick. Nobody wants to lift boxes forever, I hope. Some people do. Some people, that's all they want to do. They want to turn off their minds and just go and go and go. Um, sometimes I wish I could do that. Uh, but on this aspect, we offer a cross training program that people are identified themselves saying, you know what, I want to be the next team leader or I want to work in another department. So can you train me on a dog stalker? Can you train me on a order picker? Can you do this? So we, we basically have a structure in place that identifies these people and it's a, a structured program that puts them through to give them the training so when the next posting comes up, they're able to apply and we can say this person's trained, it's a perfect fit. This program is based on team member growth and client need, so we just don't give out training where it's not, it's got to add value to our client. So we go for advancement, job postings, uh, warehouse positions are posted based on shift and position. Team members can apply in other areas such as case pick, unit pick, replenishment, uh, receiving, loading. Uh, we specify six months in a current job so they build the competencies uh, and then allow staff members to post out. So if you have a job and you're changing a shift, you got to stay there for six months just to build the stable, uh, stability for a client. We also have uh, opportunities to be leaders. So floating assistant team leaders. And these are team members that are com uh, can apply for our FATL program, uh, which identifies and trains up our un up, up and coming team leaders internally with uh, practical experience, job knowledge, technical knowledge, and leadership development. So they shadow our team leaders. They actually cover off, we give them the practical knowledge and training of manpower planning, of health and safety, uh, incident investigations, a um, whole bunch of different things that we ask our TLs to do. This is kind of on-the-job training. And those expectations are that they'll be able to be the candidates that fill our TL position. So just in the last three months at our location, we had four of these individuals now into team leader positions. Um, and we're right now restocking the shelves in that program. So it's worked really well for us. Our mandate for the uh, DHL supply chain is they want us to 33% um, internal growth, 33% college recruiting, and 33% external. I don't like the 33 external. I'd rather have somebody come in that I know that give them the opportunity. So I kind of break the rules a little bit. And I don't like to go to the college aspect too much, but uh, it's nice to have that kind of diversity when we do the hiring. Uh, formal training. So every DS or DCS leadership employee has access to an online training resources that DHL Supply Chain has. So we have online courses for logistics, project management, leadership, finance. You can go in, log in. It's called uh, My Talent World for, for our company. And there are courses in English, French, German, Spanish, everything um, in these areas that you want to grow. And it has to be approved by your upline manager. But once that happens, you can take that online course and go through that. So that's a great learning development opportunity that we probably don't promote as much as we should in our organization. And one of the benefits of being with a large global company. Uh, once that happens too, we have technical courses and leadership courses that are available based on operational needs. So coaching, developing others, um, health and safety courses that we actually take our leaders out for three days out of the operation and send them on courses. So that develops uh, them as leaders. And then we also have an emerging leaders program. So TLs go fly down to Ohio in the US uh, for four times a year and are part of a bigger operation that gets them up to the manager level and then once you're up to the manager level if you want to be a general manager we have an academy i feel important that you know it's like i'm part of the academy so i don't know why they call it the academy and not a program but it makes us general managers feel more important i'd like to thank the academy for my speech today but, but uh no, i'm just kidding um, and that's that's in place also to uh, formally put our supervisors into higher roles so it's a lot different from when I went back in my time machine, 1987, on how to apply, how you get a job. Um, it was basically, you want to keep going up. There was no formal aspect. There was no training behind any of uh, our leadership development back in the day. 
Uh, health and safety, I think, was non-existent. I'm surprised that people didn't get killed more in the industry back then in logistics. Um, but that's the number one focus with any company now, especially in logistics, is health and safety. If you're not uh, safe in the workplace, we don't want you. We'd rather have you move on and go somewhere else. Same thing with the passion. If you don't want to be there, you're not going to fit in with our culture. We'd rather you go down the street, which is probably closer to your house, probably make more money, two dollars more an hour, and be happy there. Because we want people that are happy or passionate and fit into our culture. Any questions? How do you screen for flexibility? How do you assess that? Good question. Uh, flexibility for us when we're looking at our operation is uh, you never know what the stores are gonna, they're gonna have a big sale or, or we're gonna be busy. We look for flexibility in terms of are you able to work two hours ahead or two hours uh, after your shift if we're, if we're required? Are you looking to pick up shifts um, if, you, if we uh, ask you to? Are you flexible that way? Uh, are you, we don't really go outside of the norm with uh, shift days, like if you're on an AM shift, we look at that flexibility before and after. We fully recognize that uh, there's a lot of families out there and a lot of individuals that have two jobs. So the flexibility we look at, we know that, okay, if you're there for the AM, you have a job somewhere else, maybe part-time as a PM. Um, so we're, we're kind of in that gray area that we're looking for, you know, two to four hours, either before or afterwards to help us out on our labor plan. Hi. Uh, is there a level of physical ability that you look for? Um, we do. We, uh, we don't do any physical testing or anything like that, but the requirements are to lift uh, 50 pounds okay. on a regular basis. It is a physical activity. Um, we have one lady that is an older lady. I won't tell her her age. Um, but she takes a lot of pride out picking and outperforming some of the younger guys that come in. She's got that old work habit mentality. And she'll let you know. She's very outgoing. She says, you know, I can outpick you and I'm like 15 years, you know, older than you, or 20 or 30. And she's one of our best performers. So, you know, and she's at her work. Our productivity standards, if you're there and you want to just keep busy and just, you know, constantly, you know, doing it, it's nothing, you know, you're not asking anybody to zoom around, be unsafe. You're just there to work. You're not there to talk or, or whatnot, and, and we see a lot of success in, in people that do that. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, is your procurement and purchase handled from another location, or is it done locally from here? Because we're a third party logistics, that's uh, Shoppers Drug Mart that actually does all the purchasing. So um, they do all the forecasting, uh, they tell us what they're buying so that we can plan the way. I'm not talking about the merchandise, I'm talking about uh, requirements for the warehouses. Oh, yeah, we do all that. All the indirect, indirect spend? Yes. You work from here locally? Yes. If the minimum wage was up to $15 an hour by 2018, will that affect your hiring uh, as a company? Uh, you know, you hear a lot of debate about that when the minimum wage goes up. Uh, for us, uh, we actually start in at about $17 an hour for our, for our employees. Um, we have a lot of individuals, it's our 20 year anniversary. We have, I would say, close to over 15 people that have been there since the building is open. 19 years, there's a whole, uh, whole bunch more. I think there's like uh, close to 30 or 40. So the longevity in the, in the facility is, is uh, and the experience level, not only at the team member level, but also at the leadership are really good. Calgary, to be competitive, to get labor, um, there's a lot of distribution. Calgary is a hub for logistics. So we are in comp competition with everybody. Um, our sister, our own companies, uh, we don't want to you know, grab Peter, Peter's uh, labor to pay Paul. Uh, we, have, we do uh, wage uh, reviews every year, which go through, we do market industries, just to make sure that we are where we need to be. We're not the highest, we are non-union, so that brings a little bit of flexibility to us as well in terms of team member relations events. Uh, and we pride ourselves on our culture. Uh, we have a, an employee opinion survey that is basically the employees tell us how we do and we have six months to put in different objectives to correct that every year and we work with our staff to make sure it's their workplace to make it better for themselves i think is that it okay well that's all i have thank you very much everybody